Hello and welcome to the AI Impact Customer Showcase. My name is Kevin Perone and I'm joined by, today by Mats from Displays. Yeah. Hey, I'm Mateusz Waligurski, Head of Data Analytics in Displays. Wonderful. Matt, tell me, just I trying to identify the right kind of use case and going on this AI journey can be uh, a difficult decision. Can you just explain, like, what was the initial motivation for you to uh, begin this AI journey? Um, absolutely. These these actually came from like my private interests to try and organize and catalog a huge collection of comics. Uh, so while I was trying um, many, uh, I would say, visual recognition solutions to actually try and catalog them, I saw that it doesn't work as expected. So just to give you an example, uh, something that I was surprised about was, for example, I took like a Deadpool, Marvel's Deadpool comic with a very simple cover, just a single character, iconic pose, and yet it was labeled as Batman. So like, you know, the, every time I tried, I saw that there's a huge gap on what we can actually provide in terms of, of cultural metadata and knowledge. Uh, the other, I would say, was uh, trying to structure all my uh, thoughts and notes, because like usually I take notes in all possible cloud solutions and then trying to gather them all together in structure is an issue, but LMs were something that actually helped me do that. Uh, when you when you were thinking about this like this uh, catalogization, what, was there like a key like um, business metric or like an RI metric that you were thinking about to help understand like if how you were being effective and what the what the end result would actually be and to determine if AI was actually helping you move the needle there? Um, absolutely. I would say that our initial metric that shown us that has shown us that we have an issue was that uh, from about 2 million artworks, over 200,000 had no descriptions or wrong metadata. So we knew for a fact that we need to somehow work on that. But on the other hand, we didn't want to hire, I'd guess, 200 people to write the descriptions. Uh, of which artists and uploaders could be frustrated about because they didn't provide it. So I would say initially it was the uh, percent of artworks that had no descriptions and wrong metadata. And then we, we landed on Northstar metric as revenue from recently onboarded artworks and artists as a thing to follow to see if our marketplace fundamentals are getting held here. Okay, I mean, can, can, can you describe the the uh, scale and like the the uh, complexity here? Like, like what was the what the initial workflow look like, and like like what was the before and after here uh, with this boost? Absolutely. So uh, initially, it was just the uh, artist accounts and uploaders uh, doing simple graphic uploads, selecting categories of the artwork, uh, providing title, description, and tags. Now the issue was that. Uh, some malicious actors were engaging in so-called keyword stuffing. So basically, if they saw that a certain trend is popular in display, I'd say like Japan summarized ninjas, they were stuffing these keywords to every art. Uh, and through that, our search experience was heavily impacted. So because of that, uh, we came to the conclusion that what we need to do is to actually integrate the uh, Gemini into the artwork upload process. So actually the title, description and tags would be initially suggested by Gemini, uh, they would be editable. So if an artist wants to correct or improve the description, they can. But we still keep a backup copy, so to say, uh, to see if the original description provided by Gemini was actually an ac accurate one. And so I would say we revamped whole uploading process and the um, validation processes on our end. And through that, we actually have proper metadata right now. Okay, so it, it's, it's, it sounds like there's a few different problems here. For the first one is that is the customer experience wasn't wasn't optimal, right? Like customer is like looking for like a, potentially like a, a new movie title, and they're getting like a wide variety of artwork that isn't really relevant to their to their terms. So you're helping them. You're helping uh, you're helping to solve that problem by giving recommendations to the artists so that they're that they're providing the right kind of metadata. It, it, was there an enforcement or some kind of like a compliance on that as well? I would say it's it's. It's just a suggestion. So when they upload an artwork, it gets uh, visually interpreted what's on the like graphic file, and they get a proposal on how could that be called, what the description could be, and what tags could they use. So it's not like they are forced to do that, but it's a base that they can edit and further improve on. So I would say it's help for them. It's great. So um, by solving the customer experience here and like making the the search more aligned to the expectation of what they're trying to find. For example, like they're trying to find like a, 
a movie title of some kind or a very a very particular type of artwork that, that we've now narrowed down the the, um, the selection of art that uh, that the customer will see how did it impact the business like did you see like a particular metric that you're able to move uh, yes so before we actually implemented the uh, gemini into uploader uh, we've made a b tests on the artworks that had human-made description versus uh, gen ai made descriptions and the other one so gen ai won here and through that we basically started using the uh, i would say ai provided metadata uh, as the key attributes for search so they are more prioritized rather than the artist made ones. Uh, and through that, we've actually improved both search accuracy and uh, conversion rate through people using search. Um, when it comes to um, the revenue that we uh, saw the uptick from recently onboarded artists and artworks, in the first month, it was about um, 750%. And a month later, it plateaued at around 350, 400%. So it's still like an amazing number. Uh, which we which we see that it, it plateaued, but doesn't decrease anymore. So we're extremely happy with the result. Wow! So a 750 percent increase in, in revenue from this kind of change, and plateaued at 350 percent. Probably some learnings there on like what was the initial change and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, amazing. So so what's next? What what does the future what, what does the future hold for you? Um, I would say something that we want to work on is our AI features as well. Uh, one is the duplication of content. So we want to provide, I would say, sort of uniqueness metric to our marketplace, where we would like to see if uh, content that somebody uploads is not either duplicated from, from our marketplace already, or if somebody uh, like didn't use very simple image alterations, like, I don't know, Instagram filters, or just simply color alteration, uh, because these do not have intrinsic artistic value. So something that we want to provide to our artists and uploaders is sort of a recommendation on, we have that already in the service, you may consider doing something else. So on one end, it's the, the duplication features, and on the other, it's upscaling. So uh, our prints that I may be able to show right now, they have pretty high print requirements. So in order to actually provide a graphic file so it looks good, uh, they, it's a pretty big resolution. So something that we want to offer to our uploaders is to actually um, have a way for a smaller or larger file to upscale them through AI and then be able to print them with sufficient quality. So that's the second thing. And third, I would say, is that uh, the metadata uh, that we got through the Gemini project is something that we plan to build I would call it artist tiering system right now. So before we didn't have one, right now the amount of data that we collect will allow us to build it in the future. Amazing. So like these are all great stories, but what were some of the things uh, either in the POC phase or in the, in the solution phase that didn't go as expected? What were some of the misses or things that you learned from that that, that could have been better? So, uh, so I would say that we were trying uh, the solution for about six months because initially uh, the field's multi-model uh, multi lens uh, that had an option to upload an image, they didn't really recognize like trademark assets, characters from comics or IPs. So I would say um, the results were insufficient initially. And about five, six months later, and we recently counted that it was 35, 35 iteration of the prompt, we got to a level that was a consistent, repeatable, and could recognize trademark assets, IPs, and characters. So I would say um, the quality initially, and then later on convincing people that it won't be fully automatic. It will always need some kind of human validation because we there's always some mistakes. So even for some, I would say, topic areas, Gemini brought perfect results, then Sometimes you could find a result that got you dumbfounded. How could it provide something like that? So I would say we will always need the um, sampling phase to see if there are no weird issues coming up, right, uh, coming right up. But still, I would say on that scale, uh, the amount of manpower that we would have to engage to have that kind of knowledge and that kind of scale descriptions uh, and tags, I would say, I, I don't think even 100 people would be enough. So with a team of five, that's a good result. Amazing. So in, the, in, in, the, in this POC, you were able to achieve a, a particular metric on, 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 on ROI, which was very important to the business. 
um, and you were able to identify like, a new problem to solve. It sounds like just in like understanding like like how much um, in, in time and resources you should be invested into the human in the, in, in the loop phase, uh, which is very interesting. Um, why, when you were making the decision to to work with Vertex AI and and the Gemini, what were the main reasons why you made that decision? Because the other models that we are considering and trying to use through API uh, were inconsistent. So basically, either the uh, connections were going wrong, it provided very weird results. So I would say it was all about consistency. And the reason why we picked Gemini was that the uh, the consistent the, the consistency was there, uh, and actually that the I would say pop cultural knowledge context was the best from all the models that we've tried. Obviously, we've had to provide it as some additional, I would say, brand IP dictionary, so it better recognizes characters and so on. But still, with that context, it, it had the best quality. We, we uh, do hear from customers that the, the, the multimodal capabilities that um, exist there are, are very important. Can, can you describe like what kind of multimodal capabilities you're using? Um, just uploading, just uploading of the graphic file, uh, turning it into a vector, uh, then turning it into an embedding that we could, I would say, scan against the brand and IP dictionary uh, to see if the assets that are being detected on the image are actually the ones that are trademarked. So, yeah, just the image interpretation was was the the, the key one that uh, we knew will be a game changer for us. Amazing. So, um, really incredible insights. Uh, if you were to leverage everything that you know today, well, what are some of the best practices that you would advise to a decision maker to get started with AI in the next 30 days? Um, I would say that the simplest question that I always ask to people that are kind of skeptics around AI is like, would you make use of interns if you had 10, 100 or 1,000 of them? Because using AI is basically having access to an unlimited uh, amount of people with very entry-level knowledge that you need to properly instruct on how do you want that work to get done. So like something that I considered for uh, GPTs were that I could finally describe thousands of artworks uh, with having some cultural knowledge and context on their end. So my question would be, if you had access to 10,000 interns that could help you in your work, why wouldn't you make use of it? Amazing. So just as a frame of reference, like start to think if you had 10,000 interns, how you can get started with uh, with uh, AI. Amazing. Great. Matt, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you.